you in person. So it's a pleasure to meet you finally. Um, and today we're going to talk, we're going to keep talking about elephants. We just finished up with Nasha, who was amazing. Today we're going to go a little bit to a different part of, uh, of Africa, in the east southeast corner, uh, to Mozambique and Gorongosa National Park in particular. So earlier today we had Rachel on, she's a BBC natural history producer, and my introduction to Gorongosa was the Africa series that BBC produced, which was one of the most incredible series of, of all time put on onto screen, and the episode featuring Gorongosa was the most magical uh, one hour of natural history documentary I've ever seen in my life. And so without further ado, Dominique Gonzalez is joining us to tell us a little bit about her work in protecting and understanding the wildlife of that amazing region and how, specifically to highlight elephants in particular. So Dominique, thanks so much for joining us and uh, take us away. Thank you, Jesse. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I'll just start in sharing my screen. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Take your time. <laughs> and share oh it's my presentations right here <laughs> see it's already stunning before you've even made it full screen perfect you're good to go cool. so actually just today i know i i always talk about elephants but today i'm particularly more you know inclined to talk a little bit more about all that amazing things that call going goes at home so not only big things like elephant but also many fantastic things we have. So as I said, hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being part of this amazing initiative to spread the rest of the festival and to really you know, help other organizations that, that are in so much need. So I am Domingo Gonçalves, manager of Elephant Ecology Project in Gorongosa National Park. But today I want you to get to know a little bit more about Gorongosa map of life. So, to start, I'll say, I'll show you where Gorongosa is. Gorongosa is actually a 4,000 kilometer square protected area in the center of Mozambique and the southern end of the Rift Valley. And Gorongosa embraces a, a mosaic of ecosystems with a wide ecological diversity, you know, with habitats varying from Afro mountain rainforest on the top of Mount Gorongosa, Miombo forest, riverine forest, wooded savanna, and open flood plain. So, these unique features have supported some of the densest wildlife population in Africa. But before I go deep in wildlife, I want you to see or to, to hear what my friend and colleague Larissa says and explains about Gorongosa National Park. Yeah. Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique is known as one of Africa's greatest wildlife restoration stories. In 2008, the park had only 10,000 large animals. Today, over 100,000. But the Gorongosa project isn't just about rewilding this iconic wilderness. Inspired by the shared vision of Mozambique's former president, Joaquim Ishisanu and Nelson Mandela, there's a deep commitment that the park should benefit the local people. The park provides over 600 jobs in conservation, science, tourism, and human development. Our community health workers reach over 100,000 vulnerable people every year. Our sustainable agriculture projects, like growing coffee on Mount Gorongosa, improve the incomes and the lives of farm families. Mandela was right when he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So we build new schools, support teachers, and run many after-school programs like the girls' clubs. We're working to keep girls in school so that they can have the same opportunities in life as the boys. And every year, we bring thousands of local children on safari in the park so they can reconnect with their precious natural heritage. Some of them may choose to become part of our team. So we provide many different training courses and internships. Students can even study for a master's degree in conservation biology in Gorongosa. We are showing the world an example of what a national park can be. We are Gorongosa. 
Right, but um, you know, in Gorongosa, we also face many other issues that many, you know, last wild, last places, wild places in Africa and around the world also face. But you know, our amazing ranges have been holding the line. So, for example, you know, our poaching pressure has been reduced to uh, more than seventy-two percent reduced, and now wildlife is coming, you know, back again. It's been restored, but. Uh, so it is. It, it shows that protection is really important. Protection is crucial, but it's also one of our biggest challenges because, you know, despite of its biological richness, Mozambique is one of the least biological explored countries in Africa. Although we have over twenty percent of our land under protection, there is a huge lack of data on the composition and status of species in our protected areas, which also makes it very difficult to allocate conservation resources. And there's also a huge shortage of people or local experts who can generate biodiversity data. Until recently, Gorongosa was also similarly underexplored, but it now ranks as one of the best studied protected areas on the continent in terms of knowledge of its biodiversity. However, we still have large parts of our of our park that we haven't studied yet, you know, and we still have complex complex biotic interactions that we're just starting to understand it better. And at the same time, as the park expands, there's a, also a growing need to keep studying and keep needing, you know, data of eco ecology of these new areas. So. The Edward O. Ilson Biodiversity Laboratory is our research facility and it's an important hub for scientific and educational activity in Gorongosa National Park. It has been created to explore, document, and protect biodiversity of Gorongosa, as well as also to offer research and training opportunities in biodiversity related topics for students and conservation leaders in Mozambique. So the laboratory is named, of course, after Professor Edward O. Wilson, who has been a leading force for many scientists and conservationists to come together and focus their energy and resources on the restoration projects in Gorongosa. So in the E. O. Wilson Laboratory, we have many goals. One of them that is very important for, for us is biological exploration and monitoring. So we can do it, conduct uh, comprehensive surveys of biological diversity of our park and all its ecological zones, habitat types, and most important biological communities. These surveys focus on groups of multicellular organisms and uh, particular ecosystems with particular importance or ecosystem and also ecosystems that might actually give us a lot of new information in terms of new species to science. Um, this picture is actually one of my favorite is my colleague and friend Ricardo just exploring a termite mount. So termites are one of our ecosystem engineers that really shapes the landscape of Gorongosa, but a lot of other organisms really depend on them for refugia and especially during dry season and for many other things such as bird uh, nesting uh, and breeding sites and uh, shade and uh, for shade and forage for reptiles, antelopes, and many other things. So this is just an example of how exploration, how we do exploration in the Gorongosa in a smaller scale to a bigger scale. So the park is actually home to at least 75,000 species of multicellular organisms. So we really have a, you know, a need to continue exploring and documenting our biodiversity. The other big part of the E.O. Wilson Lab is education of Mozambican conservationists and experts. So the laboratory offers a wide range of education opportunities to Mozambican students. And these include uh, workshops in biodiversity and conservation related topics, uh, includes participation of students in the day-to-day -day operations in the lab and our biological surveys organized by the lab. And also it's also an opportunity for them to be part of a long term variety of projects in Gorongosa that we because we always get um, researchers and experts from all over the world with a lot of expertise in their areas and they are willing to give their time to teach and to take a Mozambican student with them 
so they can share the knowledge and one day maybe come back and find a Mozambican expert to help them with the work. The other thing we really do is um, the laboratory is a, is a home for, to a permanent synoptic collection of Gorongosa flora and fauna. So here in, in Gorongosa, we realized very early that we need, and it's, it is a big, it has a big value to have a comprehensive biodiversity knowledge for the management of the park, and also to create an extensive program of species documentation and mapping. So our comprehensive database is supported by a modern synoptic biological collection and also a database of genetic sequences. And this actually takes me to the jewel of our lab, which is the Gorongosa Map of Life database. So the map of life is really creating a detailed picture of life in Gorongosa. You might ask why we need a map of life because we, we want to know, we need a map of life, we have a map of life because we want to know every plant and animal species we have in the park so we can better understand the relations and the benefits they provide. You know, a complete map of life um, gives, it's, it's, a, it's really important for us, it's a prerequisite to have a better understanding of all ecosystem in general. And it's also, it's an idea of, to, to, you know, to use when you're teaching young students and building up a scientific capacity in Mozambique. And one of the tools that we use, we use many tools when we, we work with our map of life, but one of the cool tools we use is a network of sound recorders that create a, an acoustic database. You know, sound is very super important also to monitor our species, to help understand the distribution. And we can actually use that information to monitor dynamic of species. So it's very practical too, for example, to notice arrival of a new species or a species that we never heard before, such as this armored cated that is a pretty, you know, different in terms of genetic and also sound. And it was thanks to the, our, our bioacoustics that we could notice that. But not only that, sound uh, can also help us to really see how similar species or the same genus species really interact with each other. So the interaction in the same system, how, uh, how it sounds and how it, what does it tell us. For example, next slide is actually a pretty cool video. I hope you pay attention to that because it shows different species of bats, Rhinolophilus from Gorongosa. And you can see that you can hear, you'll be able to hear that they kind of harmonize their calls. So it sounds like an orchestra, basically. It's like a symphony when they start calling because they kind of harmonize. So look at this. Oops. centers of exceptional endemism in, and richness in our greater Gorongosa landscape, such as this heat map shows 
And one of the centers are, um, uh, for example, our Mount Gorongosa rainforest, where many, many species are, are endemic. And thanks to our restoration efforts uh, and the coffee grown over there, it also keeps the, to maintain the rainforest intact while still helping the people who live over there. And, you know, since we started about four years ago, our knowledge of biodiversity has tripled. So right now, actually, we, we have documented uh, 6,344 species and we're still counting. Many of these species have been listed as, as uh, in the IUCN red list. We have also documented more than um, about 25 endemic species to Gorongosa and about more than 100 species that are new to science and some, some are still being um, you know, are still being, how, how can I say, are still being described. So it's just one of the examples of how much we can achieve when we have kind of a systematic way of collecting biodiversity data and mapping and monitoring it. Well, of course, it's our goal to, to, to monitor everything that calls Gorongosa home, especially also we don't, we don't forget about the big charismatic things we have. So we have many other research programs, just projects into the, say, the same laboratory who looks at many different varieties of our, our fauna and flora in Gorongosa. But it's, it's very easy for people to think only about big predators or herbivores when think about African savanna or African ecosystem. But we found out that if we look closely to our savannas and forests in Gorongosa, there's a lot of other species, animals that are mostly neglected, but without them, we couldn't afford to have all we have in, at this moment, for example. One of these, you know, there's many little things, spiders, lizards, frogs, but one of the most uh, biggest examples I have to show you today is, for example, dung beetles. At this moment, we have recorded 170 species of beetles in Gorongosa, and we believe that we have way more than that. And for example, this is so important for us because not only uh, not only because of, of the you know, waste removal service, but also without them, for example, we would quickly sink under layers of dung produced by our thousand herbivores and animals. So by day, breaking down dung and return nutrients to the soil helps plants to grow. And you know, the plants also feed the herbivores, producing, producing more dung for the dung beetles. So, it's quite amazing the, the diversity of beetles we have in Gorongos, and it also shows how our, the recovery of our large biomass is also reflecting of our other uh, organisms, such as insects. In terms of plants, we have recorded about 200, 100, uh, 120 species of plants. You know, Gorongosa, because of its location, have different uh, ge geolo geologies in terms of soil, and it also allows to have different plant communities. So we, we have, a, of course, we have a lot of grasses, but also we have a rich miombo where we can find about hundreds of species of orchids, but also in the limestone gorges in the east of the park, we can have a lot of succulents. And for example, these species, not a lot of other species we have in Gorongosa are endemic, only found in Gorongosa. This flower, for example, this aposinacea was found um, was described the first time uh, almost 50 years ago by Ken Tilly, the first person who did a, a very detailed work or research in Gorongosa. And it, it is this plant is only endemic to Gorongosa. The other unique things we have in Gorongosa is, of course, our uh, Mount Gorongosa pygmy chameleon. This is a male and it's very small. The female is just a little bit bigger than him, but also it's not bigger than a pointy finger. So. Of course, it is threatened because of all the all the deforestation that was going into the Mount Gorongosa. But thanks to our reforestation efforts, using coffee uh, grown shade grown coffee in Mount Gorongosa and working with the communists, we are able to at least try to mitigate this and maybe we'll see maybe keep some of these species of these endemic species habitat for better protection. We also have, uh, for example, this. This amazing um, crustacean, spiny crustaceans that was 
um, was described, uh, not, not yet named, but was found very recently by science in Mount Kurungoza. And it, it, it's funny, it looks like a, a, a porcupine, which is also very common in Gorongosa. But uh, uh, the science says that the only other, the, this is probably the only species on the African continent. There's a similar species in Madagascar and others in the Pacific Islands. So it's just a tiny example of how many different species endemic that call Gorongosa home and only Gorongosa home. That's why it's so important to really continue to document this biodiversity so we can protect them. So as I said, our Gorongosa map of life gives a significant contribution to understanding of biodiversity, the composition and the function of African ecosystems. And our efforts documenting and understanding this complexity uh, allow us or give us a fundamental tool for management of the park while at the same time, we are increasing, creating and supporting a new generation of Mozambican biodiversity specialists and researchers. Thank you. Thank you, Dominique. What an amazing presentation. My jaw hurts from smiling so much for every video <laughs> and everything you shared there, and that's a good sign. So my, my first question diving in here is, you know, invertebrates obviously to a lot of people are scary, they're icky, they're gross, unlike lions or elephants. Do you find when you do local education programs that people, you're getting people to be vested and as excited as you are about the amazing invertebrates of Gorongosa? Um, you know, the times that, I, that we, I was able to be there and see when, the, for example, the kids come to see our lab, it's, yeah. it, it can be one of the funniest moments uh, because there's little things that, really things that the kids kind of see you know, at home and they have their local names, they have the jokes about it. And actually they have kind of a different knowledge that we sometimes it's traditional knowledge that we kind of take that in also in our database. So it's very funny. It's, it's either with tiny, you know, bugs or, you know, or plants, the kids or, or people from around the park always have a different idea, a different, a different knowledge that we are always eager to to, to get. So it, of course, they all get fascinated by looking at elephants and lions and other things, but they do not expect, you know, to go there and we talk to them and show them amazing facts about the little things they see all the time. Yeah. Fantastic. And I, I love that you highlighted the E.O. Wilson Foundation as well. So we've worked with them here at Exploring by the City of Your Pants. E.O. Wilson's a personal scientific icon of mine. Um, and so it's nice that we can share that message with so many kids both in person and digitally through programs like this. I'm really happy we spent this presentation talking about unique animals. So, Dominique, you are, you are wildly passionate about all this. You, you are, are doing so much great work to contribute to conservation in, in your home. Um, what's next for you personally? Like, what is there a project that you're particularly excited to share with the public or to, to dive in on? Well, <laughs> thanks for that question. Um, of course, what's next, I mean, it's always been the present is uh, the elephant ecology project that uh, I, you know, happen to manage. And uh, it's it's very close to my heart, of course. And because it's not only just understanding how our growing population of elephants are using the habitats of the park as they come back, but it's also, there's a very important point of trying to understand what does that mean for the landscape and also for the people who live close to us as, yeah. you know, they were not as much as before. I mean, before they were less than they are now. So this is very important and also points, you know, a very important note on also livelihoods and what do we really want? We don't want just to have a park with full of elephants, but just with a lot of sad people around us. We want both wildlife and people to be happy. So it brings a, a lot of efforts of coexistence in our part. And I happily, uh, I'm so proud that I, I work with uh, amazing colleagues in our department and together it's not only on our side on science, but it's also in community relations and sustainable livelihoods and conservation. We work together with the communities, for example, to bring this coexistence, you know, to remind them that we're all, all, all on this together. And for example, we're using uh, the well-known beehive fences technique that was, um, was yes. yeah, was, how, how can I say, it was 
proved by no seeking. And, you know, we implemented in Gorongosa and it was that yesterday or was the World Bee Day. And for example, today we just got an extra beehives and I'm sure that we're all happy, but I'm sure that our people, our community are also be gonna be happy because there's two points of that. It doesn't just helps protect their farm and their houses, but also gives them a sweet honey and money from the honey. So <laughs> this is what we I'm involved in in this moment and it's close to my heart. And I also love to use this elephant uh, thing to actually encourage more girls, you know, to stay in school and maybe one day become also scientists and yeah. Fantastic. Well, I, you, you've inspired me and I'm certain you're inspiring a whole bunch of people from all over the world joining us right now. Um, I do encourage everyone to check out Elephants and Bees as this project that Dominique is referencing uh, online. You can find this on Google really easily. It's an incredible conservation project um, and I'm so happy we got a chance to bring it up today. Now, in every one of our presentations today, for the last eight hours, every 30 minutes, uh, something that unites all the talks has been the importance of community-based conservation. Conservation efforts where if the community is involved and engaged and benefiting directly from these sort of efforts, not only does it help preserve wildlife, but it makes the community the stewards of that wildlife. And you've highlighted that so beautifully today in, in Gorongosa and again showcased one of the most beautiful places in the world. But you started your talk with this idea that Gorongosa is only a small part of Mozambique and has your work have you been able to share the work and the success that you've had in Gorongosa to help maybe protect other places in Mozambique, set up other national parks, or how is that work going along? Well, it's going well for us at least because Gorongosa has been seen as a new model for conservation, especially in Mozambique. Yeah. And for example, our success and recover of our wildlife is already is so good that we are actually giving our, some of our animals to other national parks and reserves in Mozambique such as the Nav National Park and many others. So we, we, we actually able now to say here, take some Impala, take some of this and that to, re, to restore the other national parks. But the most important thing, for example, I can say to answer this question is the, is the Masters in Conservation Biology we ran in Gongoza National Park. So a few months ago, 12 students, Mozambican students, just graduated from that two-year master's, leaving and studying in the National Park. And they, and they are capable, they are really with a lot of skills now to maybe, to also manage different national parks in Mozambique or to teach about biodiversity and conservation around Mozambique. So this is one of, maybe one of the greatest achievements that we could have that we now uh, are really, you know, building the capacity of Mozambicans to then take care of and be the stewards of their own national heritage. What a beautiful story. I hope they get a chance to watch this presentation and hear you be so excited <laughs> about them. Like we as a community are excited for your students. And I, you know, it's efforts like yours. Again, I mentioned the, the Africa BBC series. Five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to find Mozambique on a map necessarily. And now I would love to come when the world opens up again in person to explore such a beautiful part of the world. And I think that a lot of our audience today will be equally keen after that incredible presentation. Dominique, this has been such a, a pleasure having you today. And uh, thanks so much for joining us for our Global Biodiversity Festival. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I just want to say hi to all my colleagues that might probably be watching today. Thanks. We, we sure hope they are. I've already put the Gorongosa Map of Life on our social media and linked to this part of the video. So I hope people can check that out online too. And uh, Dominique, as always, you're welcome back anytime. We'd love to continue telling all these amazing stories of Gorongosa. Thank you, Jesse.